And uh, you see yourself achieving more when you are patient with the process of things. And so today on the show, I have young, vibrant youths. Yes, I call them vibrant because they are not just youths. And they are not just sitting down and holding their hands and not doing anything. They are doing something to better their society. They are doing something to better themselves, their friends, and their family. You are welcome on the show. I am happy to introduce Abel Simeon to you. He is one of my sons. I want him not to call me mommy on Esha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Simeon is a graduate of physics department uh, of physics. Yes, from Federal University, Lokoja. He studied physics. I know many people don't like physics, but he chose to go to physics. He must be a very talented student. Aside being a physics student, he's a digital marketer, a gospel musician, not just any kind of gospel, you know, a cappella music. When you, I know you may have heard of Dynamic Voices. Yes, I have the leader of Dynamic Voices in the house this evening, and I am so excited to welcome you on the show. Thank you for coming. He sings so much than with that baritone voice. I wish you could hear him sing, but we are not going to be singing today. And another beautiful daughter of mine, beautiful blessing of Jodomo, is here in the house. She is a student of Federal University, Lokoja, an influencer, a teenage coach. I told you that they are making waves in their own way. An author, yes, an author, he had me right than an ambassador for godly dressing, which is very, very key in this our generation because, you know, young girls just feel they can wear anything and go out. Well, she looked at it that, no, this shouldn't be the in thing. It should be the other way around. So she is an ambassador for godly dressing. And if you look at her, you will know that, yes, <laughs> she really is. And uh, she also owns a YouTube channel where she talks to the young people uh, about their lives, coaching them and telling them what to do. Though she is young, but she picked it upon herself to do something, to make a difference. So she, her YouTube channel is Ojodomo Blessing. You can go on her YouTube channel, subscribe, click and watch some of her videos and uh, you can make your comments, you can make your contributions there. So, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming once again. And I am yours truly, but I am Abu Bakr, the host. Okay, I said we're going to be talking about the young people. Now, I will target youth and the uh, restiveness, and social, uh, rest, social vices and restiveness. That's what I want to target. We, many a times, you know, we see young people engaging into things that are not supposed to be. And uh, what could be the problem? I said last week, we, two weeks uh, back, we had parents that came here and we were putting the blame, most of the blames on parenting or parenting, but we still did not neglect the fact that the young people also have to be blamed. And that is why we have them in the studio today. Let us hear what the problem is. Where is the problem coming from? What is making the young people lose hope? in this uh, country or in the in their own generation and seeing that they need to do something extraordinary, not good, but the negative way of it. And that's why we are all here. So I start with you, Simeon. Should I start with the lady or the guy? I know he will say I should start with the lady. I want to start mm -hmm. with the guy. No, no ladies first. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no ladies face uh, in this case. Now, I want us to look at the young people now. What is happening? What is uh, causing the young people to go into uh, banditry, um, kidnapping, yahoo yahoo, and all that? And you know, so many things. Today, when when they arraign all these criminals, you see that seventy or eighty percent of them are young people. What is really the problem? Okay. I'll just say that the problem with the youth or what's happening with the Nigerian youth is the absence of hope 
they've lost hope on the nation. Okay. The way things are going in the country, most of the Nigerians have lost hope. That is why, you know, when there is hope, there is life. Mm. And the absence of hope, um, hope oh. brings about uh, suicide. That's when a youth decide to take their lives. Take their yeah. lives. And that's when a youth decide to pick up arms, arms. And go into a robbery. So this Nigerian youth have lost hope. And majorly, I think it's with the way things are going oh. on in the country, with the leadership and the fact that there are no job opportunities. Oh. We have young graduates from the University going, graduating and going into the society. Most of them have to stay a number of years searching for jobs. And these people are people that got into school not easy. Right? Mm. Their parents had to struggle, struggle. That's right. for them throughout their stay in school. And for somebody who has promised the, the mother that he was going to make the mom proud mm. without a job, how is he going to do that? So we see these youths venturing into every, every form of um, criminality, on the, uh, criminality yeah. and healthy behaviors mm. in the society. So if there can be, if something can be done about creating job opportunity and making the voice of this county and the country, I think hope will be restored uh, to the youth. Okay, let me hear. <laughs> If you have a different perspective, so what do you think? Okay, um, one of the things I think are the causes of the social vices is peer pressure. Okay. Yes, I feel a lot of youth are being pressured to do so many things that are not really necessary at the moment. For instance, going into Yahoo, a lot of them are being pressured to have a lot of money. And to a very large extent, I feel this money it's not as important as they see it right now. But then, like he said, we have a bad system of government that does not support the youth. But they have to feed, they have to take care of themselves and all. And in a bid to do all of this, they tend to involve in things that are not really pleasant. Um, there's so much competition on the social space. A lot of people, you know, when your friend is doing something very expensive, you want to also want meet, to up meet up with that there. and all. It pushes them to do things that are unhealthy. Mm. A lot of things that their parents are not even aware of. A lot of youths involved in things that their parents have no idea that they do. They live a two-faced life. They are mm. good children at home, but like then in the society, they are entirely a different breed. And I feel this peer pressure to do a lot of things, to have money, to buy cars, to buy shoes, clothes, expensive jewelry and all, they're actually pushing you to, to do things that... Well, uh, yes, I agree with all that both of you said, but I want to look at it this way. You know, we still have young people, you are both young, and you have created a path for yourself, despite the fact that the country is not really... Uh, really giving much to the young people. But you sat down and thought of something to do, you can do to better your life and all that. So uh, why why won't others try and do that? So sometimes I look at it as if it is uh, maybe this get rich quick syndrome and then greed and what have you. But I, I want to, do you think the society also have a lot to contribute to these vices. Do you think the society, apart from peer group pressure, yes, peer group influences so much. But what about the society? I think um, to some extent the society also is not doing what it's well, supposed to okay. do as regards uh, the society. It's an academic okay. setting, for instance, okay. where um, a lot of students come in, they come in through examination, like the normal exam, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right? The question most people ask is, or what these uh, yeah. people were examining as, or people giving admission to students ask is, who do you know? Or yeah. who are you? Yeah. Who is your parent? And starting from that uh, level, 
these young people coming to experience this kind of thing. Mm. A young person who jam passed mm, every again. necessary thing and denied admission or Simply another person. because you don't have or uh, maybe someone that gave you a or connection simple, yeah. or simply because you're not from a particular ethnic group or from oh. a particular tribe they will ask you oh are you are you a girl like, okay i have a slot for yeah. you so, and these students these young people come into this kind of system to see things happening this way mm. it changes their thinking mm. it takes hope far away from them mm. that's why most of them go into all this but if justice can prevail for a nation like Nigeria, then from there the youth will begin to get it right now. No. I got this, I married her, oh, and I was given yeah. to me, rather than using money to buy. Okay, so, you have such a thing. Yeah. Okay, I think I should establish more on what he has said. Mm. Because from your point of view, I know you are talking about corruption yeah. and the rest of that. Yes, I think that's a major cause of a lot of things. Because the society is not even helping in whatever situation. For instance, a Yahoo boy is known as a scam, someone who scams people to get money and all. And then you see that the society does not put in measures to stop these things. If they are rather celebrated. Yes, yes, they are rather celebrated. A lot of young folks look forward to doing this kind of business because it's a, a get rich quick scheme or whatever you don't have to hustle you just have to do whatever it's so easy to get money and probably these police or um the military the security, yes, the security, security agents are aware of these things but then okay for instance a yahoo boy is being caught and put probably in prison and then he comes to bribe the policeman I can bet that if a Yahoo boy is to give a policeman money, he will give the policeman millions. In, in millions that his one year salary will not even cover for. Mm. And the policeman will collect it and let these guys go and continue what they do. Because the police or the security agents who are supposed to uphold the security of the nation have become a part of this dangerous scheme, which has become a threat to the society. They have also been compromised. Yes, they have you compromised. Know, what you're saying uh, reminded me of a video I watched of a student, you know, a student, right? Uh, I think it was during their graduation or something, one of the Nigerian universities, I wouldn't want to call it. Mm -hmm. Came in a in a limousine, a Mercedes Benz limousine, not the normal limousine, you know, a big one, a long one, and he was being celebrated. A student, yeah, a student celebrated big time, and everyone in the school knows that this guys, this guy and his group, they are all these scammers and yahoo boys, but no one is saying anything about it. No one is really cautioning them on oh, questioning how they make this money. No one is asking who is your parent, even if he is a parent of a big time politician or a, a, uh, sorry, a, a child of Angote or any big time businessman. I think the, the you know, the display of uh, wealth yeah. was really above. And uh, I, I agree with you that that can also push others to go into it. Why are the young people going into all these criminal acts? Why? Have they lost hope in our country? And what is the way out? I think that should be my next question. What do you think is the way out? Because I still believe in Nigeria. I can assure you that. I still believe in Nigeria. I was discussing with a friend of mine and she was like, she, I, all her family, her parents, her siblings, everyone is, Abroad, you know. So I was discussing with her, I said, well, how about you? And she said something. She said, I still believe in Nigeria. I am not going anywhere. I believe I have a place in this society. And I felt so good and happy with her, her statement. That means there are people that still have not lost hope in the country. I am one of those such people and I know that one day Nigeria will get better. But my worry is the young people. Now, if the young people are not really paving way or looking at ways they can better the country, I don't know, we may not have a future because once you meet 
Okay, we have a caller on the program, our first caller for the day. I'm going to be putting you on. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is uh, Samos Kimi. Okay. I'm calling from uh, uh, the village. Okay, thank you for your call. Let's hear your contribution on the show. Uh, uh, I want to appreciate everything you're doing at the studio. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your call and your encouragement. He is actually uh, making a point that parents should also look out for what they are doing. But you know, at the beginning, you said something that some people, some of these young people live two faced life yeah. when they are at home and uh, they are different people. So, how can parents get to know who their children really are? Okay. Um, I think a better way of knowing who their children really are is to build a cordial relationship with their children. Okay. A lot of parents do not really care about the emotional stability of their kids. Mm. They do not know what their children do. Parents are concerned about making money, sending their children to school. Okay, you are making a lot of money to send your children to school. You don't even know what they are doing in school. You don't know, that same school you are hustling so much to send them to. They are becoming courtes in school and their parents mm -hmm. are not aware. There's no relationship, there's no ground through which parents can communicate with their children. Parents should be able to give their children advice on the ground of this relationship. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who have um, lived a very good life just to make their parents proud. Mm -hmm. They are not different. I mean, we all have parents and if this parents can do these things, I feel parents who have children that are misbehaving can do better. Mm -hmm. And we will not ignore the fact that a lot of parents also ignore the things that their children do. Okay. Yes, a lot of parents are aware that their children have a very bad lifestyle. And these children in turn influences other children. Mm -hmm. So I think parents should be more intentional about their children. They should be more intentional about where and what their children, their children. do. They should put their children in focus instead of just going to work making money just feeding your children clothing them there should be a major there should be your major concern even scripture you know god handed these children over to you so you are responsible for them so i feel parents should see these children as a responsibility from god and put in all their best to make sure that these children become great and a blessing first to God and a gift to the society. Oh, thank you very much. That's a good one. Yes. <laughs> I believe, I know you will make a very good mother. <laughs> I can you. see that. <laughs> okay, so what do you have to say? Okay, apart from um, the parental roles in the lives of their children, mm. I think the religious institution also has a great role a to play. Yeah. A great role to play. And in teaching this um, youth yeah. the ways of the Lord, Okay. How to be contented with what they have yeah. and how to live a, a righteous life. Okay. With that they will be able to come up and live the world we are into living a more modest and a very, very good lifestyle. And also the um, parents of this youth should create a form of um, relationship with the, the lecturers or teachers of these children yeah. okay. so that they can know but like in the university now, how do you get to create a, a, a kind of relationship with the, the lecturers? In the university, the parents can visit 
time. From time to time. Yeah. Get to know. Yeah, I know there are some parents that will never visit their children yeah. from beginning to the so, end of their studies. Yeah. And that's where they are getting it wrong. wrong. Parents are supposed to pay visits to their children in the um, university. That's it. And the last one, I think the government also has a very big role to play okay. in the lives of this young Nigerian youth. Okay. By coming up with job opportunities. Because if a graduate mm. lives in university and gets a job. Mm. Don't think about That's true. And, so and you know they said an idle man is the devil's workshop. But what the, the Nigerian it. government has made us believe is this normal saying that the leaders and Youth, youth are the leaders. leaders. Yeah, I still believe youth are yeah, the leaders. leaders of, are you tomorrow. know, before the call, I was talking about youth uh, uh, still believing in Nigeria. Today, if you ask two, three, four, five young people, they will say they want to leave the country. Okay, you're leaving the country. Who are you leaving the country for? What, what the leaders are doing is giving the crumbs to the youth. Yeah. Yes, yes. They, they make I, us believe like that we have. We are, we are leaders, we are going to be the leaders, but at some point we just give crumbs <laughs> to these youths. Most, some of the leaders have to step down for young people who are capable to yeah. pick up. Okay, I agree with you on that, that young people need to go. But if we look at it, this, this, there are some young people in the government. Are they really doing well? Are they really giving back to the society? Are they there as a, uh, as a form of an example to others? Are they really showing that the young people have it all? They have what it takes to rule this country? Because I believe if they are doing that, the older ones will, will be intimidated and feel we have capable heads. But I want to believe the reason why the, the older ones don't really want to leave government or leave offices because they feel the younger the ones that don't really have what it takes. Or don't you think so? Because from my own evaluation, you know, I, I feel even those that have been given opportunity to to in government, like to hold offices or some posts, have not really done well as young people. And I believe maybe I may be wrong. But I believe that is what is giving the uh, our grandfathers the the morale to say they really want to come. Or what do you think? Do you do you have a, a better opinion? Uh, I think I have a contrary opinion. To okay. That. I feel um, even if we have young people in government, they are, I feel their decisions are being influenced by yes. the older people in government. Okay, is yes. that what you mean? Yes, that's, I feel that's how I feel. Okay, you agree with that too. Yeah. <laughs> that's so they I have they are being influenced. Yes. They have to do what yes. they are what, told. Yes. What told to do. Yes. Not what they, they want, want to, to do. do. Probably okay. they, they even have projects or whatever ideas they want, so to, they want to execute. execute but then they, they probably need approval from a higher source, yes, a higher authority, and what if those were not approved? Mm. Probably those could be, um, those are the things that could have probably stopped a lot of good things from happening. Right, happening. <laughs> so, 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 what do, what, what is your, your take, or how should I put it, what, what do you think should be done? What should be done? Like, what should the young people do? to get these things right. And what should also, because the young man, like, let me say, my daughter have to prove to me that she can really take care of the house before I can leave the care of the house in her care, right? Yeah. So what do you think the youth can do to really show the older ones that we are capable, we can do this thing, just give us a try? Okay. Um. I think a display of honesty, okay. wherever you are, as a youth, wherever you are, a sincere display of honesty will go a long way. Mm. For instance, if I know someone as someone who is very sincere and honest, I think at any point in life, I should be able to recommend him and trust him so much because I've seen him display mm. this over the years or 
for a while. So I should be able to recommend him for any higher position. So okay. I feel um, when the youth display so much honesty, in the little they are giving, in the little they are giving, yes, they sh they will do better wherever they are placed. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what do you so think? So I, my own, I think the youth should get to learn skills and acquisition. Okay. So that they will be able to stay away from this unhealthy uh, engagement of this. Uh, Mm. The, the, the country, social biases. The social biases and the country. But you know the major problem here, both uh, all of us here established it that is this get rich syndrome. Yeah. And you, when you say when someone already have that ideology or the mentality that he wants to make money, you know you want you will not want to start something small. Yeah. So how do we? Do away with that get rich syndrome. How do we get uh, do away with it? Because even the scriptures said, uh, do not uh, you, you you shouldn't look down on your days of the true beginning. So it therefore recognizes that you have to start That's from somewhere yeah. small. You don't have, it doesn't have to be something big for you to 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 be where you are. So how do we disabuse that? Start with me. What we do to you want to start from little without looking at what the pressure is or what people are doing outside. So contentment is the key. Is the key. Yes. Okay, I've been told that I have only three minutes to go. So uh, your final words to the young people out there and to also <laughs> the society because the society also have to be blamed for what is happening yeah. so what is your, your final words okay my final words to youth and to the society is to uphold the fear of god i think the fear of god has really gone cold in the hearts of many and that is why people involved in the different things they're involved in so the society the government everybody needs to uphold the fear of God. Everybody needs to reverence God once more. I think once everybody reverence God, there will be this fear, there will be this conscience, there will be this guilt that restricts you from doing certain things. And the youth should get involved in productive things. The youth should please do away with scam, do away with everything that is detrimental to your future because the future is tomorrow. And like we said, we are the leaders of tomorrow, so let us not eat our tomorrow today. Tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Okay, yeah. final words. Uh, final words for the youth to get to do something. Nothing is too small to do. Mm. Start from somewhere. And you, you can't get to the top of the building without climbing. Yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. Just take a step at a time. time. Start something. It's never too late. Just start to do something. Don't allow peer pressure to overtake you. Okay. Just start from somewhere. Mm. Thank you very much. I must say I had a very good time with you this evening. I am happy because these are young people talking. You, you, you're talking to your own uh, people, and I, I believe as many that are watching really do something so i want to really appreciate you for coming keep doing the good things you do keep being who you are and i i, I see the future i still see the future and we'll meet up there someday thank, thank you. you very thank much you, i really appreciate your coming you. all right that's the much we can take on this segment of the program today